Okay, you trader nerds, how is everybody? Hope everybody is good. I am great because I appealed my property taxes and I got a reduction. Hallelujah. I didn't even have to go to no hearing or no nothing. They just dropped it down because they heard the name Sweet Bobby. And they were like, my God, you know what he'll do? He'll talk to us like we're dogs on the... I'm sure they don't know who I am. But anyway, I got my property taxes reduced and I'm very proud of that. Very, very, very proud. So how y'all doing? I don't like taxes, y'all. Don't want taxes at all. What is this up with the market is down? I can't be down. Markets only go up. This is incredible. But it looks like an inside day. Inside is what we call a range day. Range up, range down, range up, range down. So not much movement at all. We've got average volume. So average volume. Uh, someone wanted me to share. I can't remember who the this chart with y'all and kind of explain what uh, this is. So let me just do a little bit of that. First thing I look at is the AD, and the AD, uh, when it makes a new low for the day, and this is advance and decline, advance, decline. So when this goes down, it leads the market. So you see this going down, right, continue to go down. Uh, the market should have been going down here, but uh, didn't follow. Usually it corrects. So we should be seeing now uh, this flatten, and it wouldn't surprise me at all to see this thing come down back to the overnight low which is this purple line. The blue line is the overnight high from last night. These orange lines, that's just a pivot study that I've got in there. It's a, a pivot point that forms. Um, I think this is part of our big green monster. I'm not sure what the green lines are. This is the cash open. This is where we opened at 930 on the E-minis. Um, this little shaded area here is the opening 15-minute range. Then we have something called VWAP, which is value weighted average price. It takes the uh, volume weighted average price, takes the amount of volume at each price and comes up with some land or something, VWAP. Um, this is an hourly mid band, just kind of lets you know what's happening from hour to hour if price is going down or up. And all of these serve as, I don't know, points of resistance uh, and support. The little alligator lines here, this is a Williams alligator study that I often have on here. And you'll see the alligator starts to feed. And that means, hey, it's going in one direction. As you can see, it flipped over here. And now the alligator starting to feed upward. Uh, then we have the Williams fractals. These little fractals here, you study up on them. I don't use them too much, but I do note that they are often formed when the price changes momentum. Right, This changed to down, then it changed back to up. So... I don't know how helpful they are. And then this cool little thing here has, uh, you know, what have the last bars do? And the current bar is red on AD. The one before it was neutral. The one before that was bullish. The one before that. And then it has the AD, whatever AD is, negative 89. And um, then it has the VIX over here at 14. So VIX has come in a little bit, which is kind of good. Uh, yeah. So the junkie, you want this? Let me share this with you. Those of y'all that want this. That's what we're here for, y'all. We share. Share grid. And I'll share it. Uh oh, stop, stop, stop. Share. And I'll post it into our chat. And if y'all are watching on YouTube and you want it, just let me know and I'll give it to you. Yeah. So just open that up. And uh, this is what I go. This is, if you're, you know, the dangerous thing of me looking at this, I look at the two minute charts, right? And why do I look at it? I don't know. This is my old scalping days. Y'all remember I used to be a scalper. A professional scalper that almost went bankrupt because I couldn't do good. <laughs> now, don't you ever think that I'm good at anything, y'all. I am mediocre at best on everything that I do. I'm just the only one out here that tells you that I'm the worst trader on the planet, that I'm mediocre. You know, hey, yeah, it is what it is. I live a mediocre life. I try my best. I really do. But in all things, you know, celebrate mediocrity. You know, I, I really do try to do my best. But I was. this was not... Uh, my forte. So my forte now is selling uh, options premium. And I'm still a terrible trader, but I'm not as bad as I once was. And that's where we're all trying to get, right? We're all trying to get a little bit better. So the best indicator that I have, and if y'all would like this, I'll share this too. This got the levels on it. Let me just share this one as well. This is the big green monster. And we draw it the first trading day of every month. Share this here with you guys, you guys. There you go. And uh, where'd it go? Where'd my big green monster go? Here it is. 
So it shows oversold and overbought conditions. Uh, so uh, right here is fair value zone, right? So this is fairly priced. Don't let anyone tell you it's overbought or oversold. This is oversold. This is overbought. And again, you have another fair value zone down here. So what we would say is we do look at volume profile, though, and we note that these are vacuums. How you spell vacuum? These are, I don't know if it's one C or two. Anyway, these are vacuums. I'm a mediocre speller as well. Uh, vacuums. And then this is where the most volume has traded over the last 10 days. It's always a, uh, a little point of uh, area that sucks price in. So everything is sucking price downward a little bit, right? And to, to do this and to come back to this. So we'll see. Uh, but doesn't mean it has to. Now let me show you the rest of this chart. For those of y'all that are interested. Here's what a fair value zone looks like. It's a big old zone. Remember I used to call in our early days, I would call this the butt. And I would draw what I would say looked like a butt to me. Is the butt. This is fair value zone. This is kind of the middle of the fair value zone. And it's always an area you got to look for. So there are forces that want to bring price up to the 4584 level. And there are prices that want to bring, there's forces that want to do it here. So what you basically have is, you could solve all of this with a little probability call that says, where do we think price is going to be in the next 10 days? Well, there's a good chance it's going to be between 4584 and the 4430. Okay. Gives you a range to kind of work with. Now, you might have saw me playing with the skew driver a while ago. I just want to make sure the skew driver is not out of line, and it's not out of line. Skew driver is, you know, a little bit. It's, it's skew driver is even a little bullish. And then the final thing that we look at is we look at the linear regression chart and see, are we in a downtrend, are we in a flat trend, or are we in an uptrend? We're in a little downtrend over the last 30 days or this may be more than 30 days, whatever this is. Uh, we're in a little downward pressure. We thought that this was overdone, and we had that big announcement on uh, Tuesday. And now we think that it's overdone, and we think that it's going to come back inside. So we got a doji candle here. We're forming a little doji candle today, and we expect a reversal. So you got all these things working together just to kind of figure out where we think that price is going. Good thing is, with our little plan, it really doesn't matter, y'all. really doesn't matter where price is, right? Because we're always looking at something that looks like this. Look at this, y'all. Waka, waka, waka at our profit zone. And we're, you know, in profit all the way down to two and a half standard deviations to the downside. So everything looks really, 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 really good in uh, this account. Let's look at the other account. Here's the IRA. Here's the uh, regular margin account. Ta-da! It's, oh, sorry, sorry, that didn't look good at all. Now, this one doesn't look as good. Why? Because we had these one, two ones in it, and it didn't perform. Victor has abandoned the one, two, one. I have abandoned the one, two, one, and we're back to the one, one, two. Now, I understand what everybody's trying to do. Tom King has come out with another version. You know, Victor's got a new thing that he's testing out. And it's human nature, ladies and gentlemen, to always search and to explore and I appreciate that. And we do that more than anybody. I do that more than anybody. I will go, hey, what is the hot hand? What's working? And we will change and go toward that hot hand, right? But if you look back on it, really the first version of the 112 is probably the best of all. And the only thing we've done now is move it from 60 days to 120 days. Wah. You do it 60 days, that's fine. Someone in uh, on Facebook yesterday said they do it at 14 days. Oh, that's fine too. I have no problem with it. Whatever you want to do. The thing is, you got to remember what the plan is. Everybody, and I don't mention it enough, but let's go through the plan. We are option sellers. So the first thing we do is we sell premium. We're insurance agents. We sell premium at a high probability of success. Right? So our trades that we put on have a 90% or greater probability of success. You can see my portfolio here has a 96% probability of profit. I like those odds. So probability of success, 90% sell premium. And the third thing we do is the fun part. We let something called theta decay. So if you sell something and you get a dollar for it, 
you hope the next day that it's worth 90 cents. Then you hope it's worth 80 cents. Then you hope it's worth 70 cents. As time goes on, these things decay and they either expire at zero and you get to keep the whole dollar or you buy it back for a dime or a nickel and you've made, you know, 90, 80%. Theta decays. That's why we look at theta in our account. What is our theta in our account? All right. Then the fourth thing that we do, and we spend 80% of our time on this one, manage chaos. When, as the proverbial saying goes, when shit hits the fan, what are we going to do? What did you guys do that uh, sold calls on a 2% up move? Some of you crapped your pants. Some of you said, I'm out of this. I'm going back to index funds. You know, some of you quit whatever you were doing. Some of you suffered major losses. But how did you manage that chaos? And the good thing is, y'all, we have managed chaos. I lived through COVID as a trader. I lived through, you know, so many things. August of 2016 or is it 2018? 2018. I lived through August of 2018. I've survived all of these things. Now, I have blown out uh, uh, accounts, y'all. Oh, yeah. I remember I had a like a $50,000 account. I lost $24,000 in one day. Oh, there's a bird outside my window. Hey, little birdie. One day, 50% down. And you know what I was doing? I was doing, uh, what's that space trip trade that I had no idea what I was doing. That was, what's that guy that wanted to sue me and kill me? What's his name? Run Bertino. Run Bertino wanted to kill me and, and sue me because I was teaching his thing. Well, hey, one of you things, buddy, lost me $24,000 out of a $50,000 account in one day. How about that, dude? Now, I probably didn't understand what I was doing correctly. So we spend 80% of our time as, uh, you know, we, we spend 80% of our time managing the chaos. Okay? Then number five, and this is the fun part, we just rinse and repeat the darn thing. Rinse and repeat. That's the fun part. So then you've got to take all of this and you've got to put it into a written trading plan. And your written trading plan is your little Bible for your trading. And if that ain't in there, you don't need to be doing it. And the problem is some of you are trading without a plan. And I have said time and time again, any trade that you make without it being in your written plan is a dumb trade, stupid trade. Is it in your trading plan? So we've developed the trading plan. You can look down in the description to see my latest trading plan that will be adjusted today because I do need to put Bill in there. Did Bobby make a stupid trade? Yes, I traded Bill without it being in my plan. I admit it. I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to say, and I'm, it's just going to be this. It's going to say nothing more that Bill, B-I-L, is an acceptable substitute for treasury bills. Acceptable. That means I have permission to trade in bill. See how simple that is? And I don't need to say, well, how am I going to do it? But the, the, the trading plan, let's see if we can open the trading plan up so y'all can see the, the, the trading plan. Let's just go through the trading plan. Y'all want to? So let's see, the graduate miller, of course, Ella, I wouldn't dare advertise it until the renovations are completed. Evan asked, what would the message include? Uh, this is my novel, y'all, about real estate. Let's see, what's my trading plan? Trading plan, trading plan. Here we go. Trading plan. Ta-da! So we got this great trading plan that gives us everything that we should do. So let's go. And let's save it. Uh, view. Let's just let's let's adjust the trading plan ourselves. You want to? Let's go through this. This will be good. Like Ed's saying, you know, these old educational videos that we haven't done in a while are fine. So let's go through the trading plan and let's uh, let's save this as one that we're going to update today. Okay. So I'm going to save a copy and we're going to call this eleven. What's today? Sixteen. My water bill is due on the twentieth. Got to pay that thing or face a ten dollar late fee. And y'all know how I am. Sometimes I don't I don't pay my bills on time. All right. So here, well, I always pay never pay a bill 30 days late. That's in the novel because that reflects on your credit. You never do that. That's why I've got an almost 800 score. And I just can't quite get to 800. I'm at 700 and something. 
All right, so day's 11, 16, 23. So let's update our trading plan. Okay, here we go. Trading plan objective. Trading plan strives to quantitatively, that's what we do, extract profits from financial markets utilizing the micro E-minis, that's the micros, and E-mini S&P options. Now, if you want to trade SPX, go ahead. I don't want to. Now, in this particular account, the $450,000 account, because my attorney says, Bobby, you're okay trading this account as long as you stay in the futures and blah, blah, blah. And he's given me a lot of different things that I can do in this account. So my attorney has told me, basically, Bobby, you're a future trader in this account. Now, my goal is to have a minimum 20% annual return is desired. All trades are entered into an Excel spreadsheet, and the spreadsheet monitors the overall portfolio metrics good. All right, the trading strategy is composed of two primary components, naked puts and a put debit spread. I don't think there's a reason to change that, do y'all? Anything else you want to put in there? That's the two primary components. It's a one, one, two trade. Then I monitor three portfolio manage, metrics that control the entire portfolio. Delta, okay, so it tells what delta is, and it tells what I don't want delta to exceed, okay, and then we our spreadsheet will tell us if we're long or short, too many deltas. And then theta is the fuel upon which our portfolio runs. A primary goal is to always maintain a minimum theta of 0.10% of your portfolio value. Now, as theta, as VIX goes up, we can maintain more theta in the account, okay? Minimum theta, maximum theta. Then we measure buying power, ensures the portfolio's overall position sizing and not too large, and the portfolio is not taking excessive risk. For a more aggressive approach, look at this, y'all. I wrote this in here. It is permissible to run the portfolio at approximately 50% buying power at all times. Remember when I said, I don't know, man. I know my spreadsheet says don't get over 35%, but man, I'm aggressive. I want to go... 50%, and I have permission to do that. Otherwise, I can follow this. If VIX is less than 15 where it is here, you don't use more than 25% of your net liquidating value of your net. So nothing needs to change here. Okay. The strategy involves a 112 trade. Now, y'all, I debated on whether I should keep 111 in there or 112. You know, I had to roll 111s too many times, and I'm lazy. I got stuff to do. I got goats to milk and I've got chickens to, 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 you know, whatever. I got chickens to milk and goats to collect eggs from. You know, I got all this stuff going. So I said, I don't want the 111 in there. I'm just going to do the 112. So a 112 trade is composed of an out of money put debit spread and two out of the money naked puts. Ideally, but not require a one to one ratio of naked put positions to put debit spread is conferred. And if I can get a ratio of greater than that, right, of, 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 of greater put debit spreads rather than naked, I really even prefer that. So let's see. Naked puts are sold. Now, I like, and don't ever say that I don't give credit to where credit is due, and don't tell me that I'm stealing other people's stuff, because Tom King is the one that came on and told us about the 120 day, because I noticed a lot of y'all were doing it. And I noticed that James was doing it, and I liked the 120 days. Now, I could easily go back to the 60-day if I wanted to, but I don't feel there's a need to. I like the 120 days. Why? Why would I like 120 over a 60-day? Anybody know? Because I can get the naked put farther away from the money. It's just safer. Now, I know what you're saying. Yeah, Bobby, but you got to hold it longer. I got it. The probabilities play it. So the strike, I sell two five delta puts. Anybody see anything that needs to be changed so far? Management. Okay, so these naked puts, naked puts are usually closed at 95% profit, but subject to overall portfolio metrics. So at, a, at usually gives me permission to close it at anything I want to. But usually I'm looking for 95% profit. It's acceptable to allow the naked put to expire out of the money. Okay, so I can let it expire if I want to. Right, subject to overall portfolio metrics. Now, 2x loss. Now, this is something that's a little different than uh, Tom King, right? He takes a 1x loss on the max profit. That's hard for me to keep up with. I can easily see if my naked put is down 200% and go, okay, I'm just going to close. Okay, so I can close those at a 200% uh, loss. If you want to do like Tom does and do the one times whatever the max profit is, you know, in the tent as your law. Yeah, do that too. This is just easier for me. 
Then I put in there, look, if my deltas get breached, now this is something that Tom doesn't do. This is just something I like having in here. If the short strike becomes 30 delta or higher, I got permission to either close that trade and accept that loss or to place that put in problem child status where the debits and credits are monitored to ensure that the trade is ultimately profitable. I give myself options here. So what you do is you close those puts when it gets to 30. And again, I don't have to. Permission is granted. It's not a re requirement. We have rules and we have permission. Do as many rules as possible. Limit your permissions. So I close the put. I can roll it down farther away from the underlying price in the same expiration and reposition by selling twice the number of naked puts. In other words, it would become a 114 if I wanted it to. Um, but normally I don't do that. Alternatively, and probably what I would do, is the position could be rolled out farther in time and possibly farther away from the current price of the underlying and reposition so that the credit received is equal to or greater than the debit required to close the initial put. So if I close something for $5, I want to make sure that I collect at least $5 when I sell the new one. Okay? Let's talk about our put debit spread. A put debit spread is bought. Days to expiration, either in the same expiration as the naked puts or to get the cl spread closer to the spot price and at least one half a day. I am axing that. You and I are axing that. I didn't like it. That's what we did in the one, two, one. In the one, two, one, we put those in a different expiration. So here's what I'm going to do. Days to expiration. Use. The same expiration as the naked puts, period. I ain't putting them in a different expiration. If y'all want them, go ahead. I don't care. You do you, baby, but I ain't doing it. I didn't learn my lesson. I don't want to do that. Because I was ending up with, oh, my God, I've got naked puts, and I don't have any put debit spreads. So this way, I combat that totally, okay? All right, width, 50-point wide. And also, if that 300 point wide is also acceptable, no, I don't, I don't know, man. I'm nixing that too. I don't want that in there anymore. That reeks of the one, two, one, and I don't want to do it. Now, Victor has done some studies that says that maybe the 75 is better. That's fine. No big deal. And I want Victor to try that. I love his pioneer spirit. And the great thing is, we can compare notes and say, well, which one's provided? So I'm going to stay on this path. And we'll see which one kind of does better. That's great. Okay. So it's quoted at approximately a $10 debit. That's kind of what I want to pay. Actual cost is 50. It's 500 for ES. Look for a long put to be approximately at 25 delta for a 50 wide and nine delta for 300 wide. Well, we ain't doing those anymore. I can take that garbage out. I love the delete key. We're just making this short and sweet. So look for the long put to be at approximately 25 delta for the 50 wide. Okay, and I don't even need that for the 50 wide. Let's just concise that. The long put to be da 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 da. So we've already said it's 50 points wide. So we know at approximately 25 delta. Everybody with me? Management. Under normal circumstances, the put debit spread expires worthless. This is another thing that Victor challenged and said, hey, Bobby, if you were to put this up at the 35 delta, it wouldn't expire as worthless. I got it. And that's why I'm so glad he's trying that out. All right. Permission is granted to close that put debit spread before expiration if the spread is approaching full profit. In other words, you're approaching full profit on the, the tent there. Or the current price of the underlying, whatever you're trading, is in that profit tent. But it's at risk of exiting the profit tent if you don't close it right now to profit. Yeah, go ahead and take the profit. Or... Any leg of the spread that is in the money must be closed before expiration to avoid exercise and assignment fees. Well, check with your broker. How do they handle it? If both are in the money, are they still going to charge you exercise and assignment fees, even though you'll wake up long the future and shorter future, and they'll cancel each other out? Are they still charging you um, exercise and assignment fees? Check with your broker. No big deal. All right, so let's go on. So we got our put debit spread there. So then we've got uh, our little little board here that tells us what happens with our deltas and our thetas and our buying power if we put on a one one two trade okay it's going to increase your delta it's going to increase your theta and it's going to increase your buying power that's easy right so now let's go i've written in strangles in here a lot of y'all wanted to do strangles now y'all this is not my bread and butter now i hate to tell y'all this 
but little old Bobby used to be Mr. Strangle. Let me tell you something. I used to sell them every day in every underline. I did them in the Euro. I did them in the British pound. I did them in wheat, in uh, soybeans, and in corn. I did this in gold. I did this in uh, oil. I did this in the E-minis. I did it in everything. And then I didn't. Then I didn't. Why did I not? I don't remember specifically, but it had to be some reason that I stopped. So some of y'all want strangles in there. I'm going to leave them in there if I just want to toy with them. But this is not going to be part of my principal strategy. So we said, hey, put them at 90 Deltas. Uh, when we had that uh, session with Tom, I kind of used his stuff, right? He said to put short strike at 7 Delta, the call short strike at 6 Delta. I'm fine with that. doesn't matter. I used to do 10 Delta and 10 Delta. Close them at 50% profit. If it reaches 2x loss, close them. Again, I wrote in the 30 Delta breach in there, right? Close for a loss, roll it out and saying, roll it on. Okay. So no big deal, y'all, that I got this written in here. Now, what do I say? I, I don't say that I can put them on gold and all that. I had to say, I'm either going to do an ES, MES, SPX, which I probably wouldn't do SPX. I'd probably do ES, MES. Okay. But I wrote SPX in there. I guess I could take that out. Probably take that out. Why don't I take that out? ES, E minis, or we're just we're just taking out excess words, y'all. Okay. So we got our strangles in here that you can do. Okay, trade entry. <laughs> trade entry is entirely dependent on the Greeks and the trade metrics. Uh, if all three metrics are at permissible levels, a new opening trade may be initiated daily. If any of the trade metrics are violated, no new trade will be initiated unless my theta is too low, and then I can put one on. Now, what I need to put in here, though, trade entry is entirely dependent on the Greeks and trade metrics. Now, that's not entirely true. Because if I were to look at the $450,000 account today, what would I say? Oh, God, everything is at permissible levels. I need to put a trade on. But that's not the case. So what we need to do is we need to, we need to put in here that it's okay to do these on a schedule. So let's see if we can do that. You ready? So let's control V. There we go. Let's uncheck this and uncheck this. So uh, trade entry is also, let's see, it is also permissible if, no, I don't want that green, it is also permissible to, I didn't know how to spell again, enter trades on a predetermined schedule. For example, wait until the 120 DTE uh, day six expiration is uh, uh, DTE options are available. I think that makes it nice and sweet. Everybody see what I'm saying there? So trade entry is not necessarily is uh, can be. can be dependent on the Greeks and trade metrics, okay? Or it's also permissible in your trades on a predetermined schedule. For example, wait until the 120-day options are available before entering the trade. I guess I don't even need that. Let's just keep it simple. If all three metrics are at permissible lessons, a new trade, opening trade may be initiated, not must. It used to be must. Now it's may, okay? Again, it's a permission, not a requirement. If any of the three trade metrics are violated, no new trade will be initiated unless my theta is too low. So if buying power is too much, if any of those things, uh, delta is too big, whatever, don't put on new trades unless my theta is too low. Optional hedging. Puts may be purchased subject to a trader's risk tolerance. Uh, we found through our own back testing that the 14-day puts were really good. You can spend up to 3% of your account net lit value in a year. Just divide that amount by 52, and that'll tell you what's put to buy if you want optional hedge. Again, it's optional. Now, we did put in Victor's hedge on demand, okay? During times of market turbulence, when you're like, oh, my God, I'm scared. What do I do? You can put a hedge on demand. Uh, let's say days to expiration nearest to 60 days to expiration. Let me move this to the next line here. Hold on. 
hedge on demand. Uh, 60 days inspiration, it's going to be approximately 1% of your net lick value. So a $50,000 account, you look to buy a put debit spread for $500. The width should be half the cost of the PDF. So if you're paying $550, you're looking for a 250 wide put debit spread. For a $200 put debit spread, look for a 100 point wide spread. This is just if you want the hedge on demand in there. I liked it. And I thought, hey, I'll write it in here if I want to do it. Victor came up with a great thing, and I kind of like where we uh, we're kind of going with this, right? Uh, remove when it reaches a 25% a loss and go, screw it, it didn't work. Or if it uh, continues to fall, you can remove it for profit to probably 600%. Those were all Victor's measurements, and I love it. So I put the hedge on demand in here. All right, treasury bill ladder. Here's where we got to do a little work. Since the upper limit of buying power usage is 50% of the account's net liquid value, a portion of the account can be allocated to purchase treasury bills to generate return on unused cash. In a margin account, up to 50% of the net lick can be allocated to treasury bills. In an IRA account, up to 50% of the net liquidation value can be allocated for treasury bills. Uh, laddered in four-week, eight-week durations, utilizing one-fifth of the total percentage, da-da-da-da-da. Just everything that we go through on TBL Tuesday. Now, what's this? Bill is an acceptable substitute for treasury bills. That's all I got to put. Now, I know what I'm doing with this, right? I'm just buying bill instead, instead of paying uh, Tasty and having to get on the phone. I mean, this is not 1984, y'all. Getting on the phone with a broker to execute a trade with Tasty, and then they're going to charge me $25 for the privilege? Hell no. Crap no. So I said, hey, Bill is an acceptable substitute for treasury bills. You know? And um, I don't know. Could I put in here, you know, use up to 90% of your buying power on the entire account? I guess I could, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I want to put there. But I just think right now, bill is an acceptable substitute for treasury bills. Now, let's see if this is all. Okay, good. Okay, good, 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 good. Have I got enough space to put that in there? I don't. All right. Portfolio adjustments and risk metrics. If any of my metrics are violated, permission is granted. You see, again, this is not something I have to do. I can close a profitable position to get things down. I can roll losing positions to extend the duration. I can sell a 10 delta or less call nearest to 60 days to expiration to get my deltas down if I needed to. I can sell futures contracts. We generally find out that we don't need to do this. We always get burnt doing that, but it's a permission, not a requirement. I can buy cheap protected puts out at 14 days for approximately 30 cents just to, you know, give me a little relief. I can close losing positions and I can even close the short put in a put debit spread. Think about that. Whoo. I got to put debit spread on. I can close the short put, take off some extra risk, and that leaves me with a loan. And then we've got a thing here that kind of tells what, if you want your delta reduced, you can close a row position, sell futures, buy puts, sell calls. That'll all reduce your delta. What will it do to your theta? What will it do to your buying power? Circuit breaking. And I love the circuit breaking. In times of extreme volatility in the markets, which result in a daily drawdown of 5% or more. In other words, you're sitting there going, man, I'm doing good. And all of a sudden you get busted in the mouth, your portfolio is 5% down and you're flipping out. I give myself permission to close any and all open positions till the market normalizes. Man, if there's a, 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 a nuclear war and everybody's flipping out and I get down 5%, I can close everything. Let's just sit it out of one. You know, you survive another day. Then when the strategy... While strategy utilizes volatility to generate higher returns, it may be necessary to exit the market for short periods of time. Ladies and gentlemen, just like David Allen Coe has the perfect country and Western song, this is the perfect plan for me. Doesn't mean it's your plan. You may say, screw the strangles, Bobby. I'm taking that out. And that's fine. I'm not going to do many of them, if any. I got permission to. You got portfolio adjustments. You got a circuit breaker. To me, you and I have constructed the perfect, the perfect trading plan. Not for Jim and not for Rob and not for, but for little old Sweet Bobby. This is Sweet Bobby's trading plan. And I will post this in our Discord and I'll update it on uh, YouTube so that you get the latest trading plan. Any questions, any comments? Now, finally, let's get to see our little, uh, little accounts are doing today, y'all too. 
So let's see. We got two IRAs to look at real quick, like. So let's go to those. So let's go to the IRA first. And in the IRA, we are at 92384. 92384. 92384. Fire up the band. Rico. Yeah, Hallelujah. Now let's see what our Greeks and ratios are doing here today. So here we go. And let's go. Here we go. So we're at 3240. 3240. 3240. And we'll show you the trading plan in action, right? So we're uh, uh 14. All right. Buying power usage is probably low. 16,800. All right, so you see here, we're green, green, and green, y'all. It's green, but what? We're a little bit low in our theta. So to get extra theta, what do you do? Well, you put in another trade. So since this isn't a scheduled account, let's just do that. So let, you'll get to see the trade plan in action. So we go over here, and we go to 120 days. Since it is 120 days, and we figured out, then we figured out the AM settle was better? I think we did. And so we're going to sell a five delta right here. Try to get fourteen dollars out of it. See if we can get Phil. Fourteen dollars. Fill me, baby. Fill me, baby. I'm gonna let it work a minute. So we got that in for there, and then we got to do our put debit spread. And remember, we said we'd go to the twenty-five delta, twenty-four. Percent probability of being the money. So let's buy the 4350, 4300. See if that kind of fits where we want to be. And that one's going for nine dollars. Probably bump it up nine and a quarter. See if we get filled there. Boom. We are in at 910, baby. All right. So let's go work our little naked again. So remember, got to make it less advantageous. So instead of us getting fourteen dollars, we'll replace that with thirteen seventy-five. Ta-da! I did do two, didn't I? Yeah. Ta-da! And we're filled. And there you go. Now, what did that do? That increased my buying power. That increased my theta, and it also increased my deltas. Beautiful. All right, let's go to the second account. I'll record that in a little bit. I say I will. I probably won't. So let's go to the Bobby Beth two hundred three, which is the Roth IRA. And we're at 29411. Y'all, I remember when we wasn't that much. 29411. 29411. Look at us. $29,411. Praise the Lord. Well, we're moving on So we're up 12.63%. How are we doing from the same time with the market? The market's probably beating us. No, we're beating the market. Look at us. We're at 12.63. The market's at 12.40. Look at us. We are the stuff of champions from when we started this again. All right. So let's go and get our Greeks and ratios here. So here we've got 1319. Let's say 1319. 13, 19. 14 is our thingamajiggy. And let's go over here. And look at our buying power is 7,500. 7,500. What do y'all see here? I see green or a little bit red. I see. So what does the plan say? If any of these are red, you can't put on a trade unless your theta is low and then you have permission to do so. Okay. Let's see how our trades look here. There's nothing that says it needs to be close but let's just put a little trade on you know too so what you can do is you can go back to the other account watch this i'll show you an easy way to do it say you want to do the same trades right so you go create duplicate order confirm and send and then put it in the 2030 account Ta -da. in and then let's go over back to the 203 account and Let's get the put debit spread. Create a duplicate order at 910. Confirm and send. 
and put it in the 2030s. Cheddar. Field, baby. And that is how you do it. There is a wasp on my window. I'm about to kill him, and I will see y'all tomorrow.